I on Saturday night some drinking uh, gin. Um, apart from that, Neil Powell of uh, Monmouthshire, our amazing butchers we work with in uh, Acidor and Bar 44, has sent us some stunning free range pork. This is from Mrs. Teague's farm in Raglan. So we use a lot of this. And what I'm going to do for you is show you what we do in Bar 44 with all our pork belly recipes of, of how we cook it. Okay, and we, we cure it for 24 hours, wash off the cure, and then we slow cook it for another night. But we're gonna do a recipe for home, which is a lot quicker than that, but a similar process, okay? All I've done so far is score your pork belly, okay? You wanna keep that in the fridge for a few hours um, without any wrapping on to dry it out. And I've scored it every sort of centimeter or so all the way down so you can see that. Okay, still got the uh, the spare rib in, so you've got your bones in here. And we're just going to whip this out. Uh, and you're going to save this probably to slow cook it and do it with an amazing Spanish rice or maybe a, a paella um, when the weather picks up. Okay, you see this natural V here where the ribs get smaller. So I've just cut down there, see where we are, and I'm going to whip out these ribs yeah. and we can save these for an amazing slow cook. There we go. So you can freeze them uh, maybe, use them another time. That would be super, super tasty. This is our whole pork belly we're gonna do. We'll probably do it in two, two halves to be easier for your oven. There we go, slap it. Um, let me just tell you what we're gonna do with the cure. We're curing it over to, overnight to give it lots of intense flavor, aromatics and spices. Um, also, it will draw out some of the moisture in it to intensify that beautiful free range pork flavor. This is gonna be salt, sugar, garlic, all wild garlic, you know, I can't stop using it in a minute. Fresh coriander, bay leaves, Cloves, juniper, star anise, and some spoonage going on of black pepper and coriander seeds. So we're gonna blend those up. Right, we're gonna sort out the cure. We're gonna put all our spices in, put it in a Nutribullet blender, whatever you've got, that will really mix it up. This is gonna go on to the completely Brown. And in here, we've got the garlic, coriander, fresh coriander, sugar. Remember, I'll give you all the measurements on the website. And there, and that's going to blitz for about three minutes till you get a greenish paste. I'll stop now and come back because it's super loud, <clears throat> and I'll show you when the paste done. Ta-da. Okay. Look at the dry, <clears throat> dry and the wet mix. If you could smell that, that's incredible. And this, we'll see, is gonna come into a wonderful paste. Get all this in, mix the both together. And then we're just gonna rub and massage it all into the muscle meat side of pork. Okay not the skin side because I'm expecting you guys want a nice bit of crackling on your belly pork. Um, bear in mind this is for tomorrow. Get all of that. All of that. Over to the pork. Real good mix. Okay. Now this is just going to be rubbed all over. Cling film back in the fridge overnight. And I'll spend the rest of the night tonight <laughs> thinking about it because <laughs> that's the weirdo I am and also thinking about what I'm going to cook with it tomorrow and more importantly what I'm going to drink with it. Oh, there we go. First part, here we go. So tomorrow We'll, uh, we won't salt the skin now, 
we've scored it and it's dry, I'm going to keep it dry. And tomorrow we'll get salt and oil into it and ensure we've got a really good crackling. So that, looking lush, go in the fridge overnight. I'm going to finish my gin. See you tomorrow. Happy Sunday morning. Uh, I was all ready this morning, beautiful day. Come and sort the pork out, then it took a turn for the worse. Put my shorts on. And look at what this lockdown has done to me. I can't even do my buttons up. So, <coughs> being completely hacked off at myself for eating and drinking so much over the last month. I'm gonna show you this bit, then I'm gonna go for a long run. Probably knack my knee and, um, I can say that. Okay. Knack my knee and come back and eat a whole pork belly just to, you know, compound the situation. Anyway, look at this. Let's get cracking. Beautiful cure on there. There's been quite a lot of moisture come out of that overnight. So just be careful of that when you're, uh, when you're doing that. Take you over to the sink. We're gonna wash this off, pat it down. Be quite careful not to get too much moisture on the skin because you're gonna want that for your you crackling. Just gonna wash this off. If that keeps going, it'll just be too salty and strong. If you wash it off nicely to this extent now, you don't have to worry about seasoning after. That's all your seasoning done for you. Cure's rubbed off. Uh, keep the skin dry. I'm just gonna, I've done a load of braising veg here. Uh, whatever you've got in your salad box in the fridge, gonna act as a trivet. Some water and I'm gonna use the wine we're gonna be pairing dinner with later, an incredible uh, Vigna Abbe Amontillado, toasted dry style of Palomino Fino. I'm gonna put that in there, it's gonna make a great sauce. So we're gonna roast these on top of there, but first I'm gonna get the crackling going. So you're gonna have good extra virgin olive oil, rub that over. Both hands wet then, because I've got to put it in the salt now. Keep one hand dry. Lashings of sea salt, okay? I'm gonna really rub this into the skin if you want great crackling. I've got another trick at the end if, uh, for you as well, if I get great crackling. So rub, massage that right into the score marks as well, getting it deep in. Take that off, one half. Bob's your uncle. Oh, nice sizeage, nice and snug. This is going to go in now at 220. Get those grubby things off there for 20 30 minutes. Steam it. That's going to get that skin going. Then we're going to turn down to 130. Probably that's going to take three and a half, four hours, and we're going to check it. Every oven, as you know, varies in every house. So really it's gonna depend on you to see when that meat is super, super tender. After that's done, we'll finish the crackling off and I'm gonna plate up a little tapper, 44 style for you. And also I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna be doing with it for our tea. So see you later. Did my run, didn't screw my knee up, so bonus. Had some more prep uh, to do, so I've done that. Got the health drink inside me, called the beer. And let's see this bad boy. Wow, I've turned it up again for the last 20 minutes to get that crackle up. But I'm hoping. Look at that. Might be hotter one end of the oven than the other. Wow. Let me. Have a knife. Absolutely lush. When you look at this meat, oh, it's melting. Literally pulling away. That's gonna be incredible. So now I'm gonna take those out to rest, make some sauce from all that good gubbins in there. If you're struggling with crackling, a good extra tip is to get a pan of hot oil get it super hot, be very careful. Uh, 
put the pork on a tray in another rack and then just ladle it on and you see it all puff up. But I don't think I'll uh, do that today because I think this is pretty good. So we'll see you when I'm uh, cutting this up, plating it up for a tapa and our dinner. Right, ready to plate up, tapa and dinner. We got a southern Andalusian theme going with our tapas dish. I've made an ajo blanco and it's a version of ajo blanco using apple and cucumber. Okay, we use this loads in the bars. Uh, the history of it is it's sort of a precursor to gazpacho. Any stale bread you've got hanging around, you make it, make it into beautiful cold white soup. But in the UK, it's quite hard to market that on its own, so we use it as an accompaniment to dishes. So you've got almonds, sherry vinegar, bread, olive oil, garlic, um, obviously the apple and cucumber in there. Just gonna take one of these. Normally in the bar, we'd press this now for another night so you can get a nice clean cut, but I wanna do it while it's still warm. Beautiful bit of pork belly. And then we're gonna brush it. Look at that. With a uh, Catalan. Oh, messy. Chef's gonna tell me off. Chestnut honey. Let's just Then, I'm gonna use, I've just done a little pickled cucumber and apple salsa with that. Just gonna pop that on the side, just to cut through that rich, rich pork. So you've got the nuts, rich pork, you've got the sweetness, you've got the sharpness, and you've got a little bit more olive oil to finish it off. And, because we're being a bit, Pretty at the minute, more wild garlic, something like that. There we go, that's your finished tapa. That'll be lush. You'd pay six and a half quid for that, wouldn't you? I think it's a really generous portion as well, uh, what we give. So, that's your tapa. Next, main dish. Literally, it was a store cupboard raid. So we had parsnips left over, all sorts. Probably double the amount of pork. So look, you can get the moisture coming out of that. It's just beautiful. Super creamy parsnip puree. Don't ever want to see a smear or a swipe. My chef's banned from the kitchen for doing things like that. We got Ava wanted to make some parsnip crisps. So we've got parsnip crisps. Also more wild garlic. Really sorry, but made a salsa verde with that. Just with some store cupboard uh, anchovies. Parsley, lemon zest, olive oil, etc. Um, I made a, just some sauteed broccoli, a couple of them. And easy seasoned up. And the sauce I made was with the Amontillado sherry. Okay, just reduced back down with some uh, stock as well. Nice and neat, you don't want that all over. Want dribbles everywhere. And Ava wanted to make some parsnip crisps. So you've got some lush, salted parsnip crisps just with the peelings. So those are your two dishes. Beautiful pork, thank you very much, Neil Powell and Mrs. Teague in Raglan. Of course, I was thinking all night about the pairing and what we do uh, on the wine front and really a Montiago sherry is the ultimate pairing with pork. Pork's you know the most important meat in Spain and it's fresh or cured and it can be treated well. A Montiago sherry is a dry style of oxidized fino so it's got a really really dry palate but because it's been oxidized ooh, that's got in the pork <laughs> <laughs> uh, in contact with the air with aging, you can see that beautiful colour. It's got a sweet caramel nose and vanilla, but on the palate, toasted, rich, dry, um, nutty, just stunning. And it's gonna cut through the rich pork uh, in which, whichever way you have it. So I'm off to undo all my good work from my run. Um, have a nice Sunday. <laughs>